Ladies and gentlemen, it is now time for the Benjamin Zulu show. And I love it, by the way. You see, Benjamin has told you and has taught you to treat dating as a market. Okay? You go there with your open mind. If it goes through, well and good. If it doesn't, you move on. Now, as a single lady, you need to understand that as you are treating dating as a market, you are bound to meet everyone there, both married men and single. Now, you need to have wisdom to know some of the tricks that married men use to trap single ladies like you. And that is why we are here today. Benjamin is going to tell you some of the tricks married men use to trap single ladies like you. Hey, Benjamin. Hello. Now, let's start here. Why? We mentioned the other day why a lot of married men run after single ladies. Yes. And we said several reasons. One of them is because she's unattainable. Mm -hmm. Things that are prohi prohibited, have a lure. The Garden of Eden was full of trees. But this one, they want not to eat. It's yeah. what they want. Mm -hmm. It's what they're drawn to. When they say don't, 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 uh, wet paint, people want to touch. To touch. Yeah. If you don't write, they may not even realize it was, you are warning them so that they don't soil their clothes. Yeah. <laughs> they don't, but the, 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 the temptation for the forbidden. So the one reason women stop uh, asking and wondering is because one, you're forbidden. Number two, uh, you may be younger and uh, fresh and full of youth, energetic. And for him, years may have passed by. Years may have gone by him with his wife. And he thinks now he wants to, you know, take advantage of uh, your freshness, your youth. And because they think you have no money, you know, if you're not married, they can just corner you around. The other reason they, they go after these girls is because some of these girls, um, him, he has, is more established in his career. Mm -hmm. If he's... Uh, you're in the same industry, maybe he's senior, and you. So he may look like he wants a business of sort. He assists you in your career, and you reciprocate mm -hmm. <laughs> with his sexual favors or relationship. All of the reasons why married men go after single ladies are selfish. All the reasons are for him. Mm -hmm. It's not to help her in any way. He he wouldn't want that for his daughter. He wouldn't want that for the woman he married. Mm -hmm. He wouldn't want that for a person he cares about. It's exploitative. It's egotistical and selfish. People of character look at, what if this was my daughter? What if this is the future wife for another man like me? Would I want my son to come to a woman who has been so taken advantage of abused? So there is never an advantage or balance. There, there are other girls who, the sick group of 125. Yes. <laughs> When you date before you mature mentally, you make such complicated mistakes, such... And I asked you the other day, what is this cost? How, how much must we pay for ignorance? Bramwell, I gave two stories yesterday that were chilling. One girl, I saw her on, in, uh, you know, on death row, condemned, you know, sentenced for, to death. Because one day when she was in college, and she mentioned it casually, although I was in campus, I happened to, I happened to have a boyfriend. And she mentioned it casually, yet it is the root of all her disasters. Yeah. So she, was, she got pregnant by the boy. And then one day he came home drunk, a quarrel ensued, and a fight. And she hit him, stabbed him with a knife. She said she was short tempered, she's also pregnant, I think she was overcome with anger. I don't know the arguing of a war. This exchange. The man died just like that. <laughs> what is that? What is that? So the same girls usually date very mature. A man was saying, I think I'll divorce my wife soon. She does not understand me the way you understand me. No, 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 no. Then she comes asking me, do you think really age matter? Do you think that's a problem with second wife as long as you respect the first wife? <laughs> <laughs> How do you respect somebody and you are improving, getting into her marriage? What kind of respect are you talking about? <laughs> So they ask the questions and you can see the immaturity, the childishness. <laughs> and I, I, I usually tell them, you know what? If you wait a few years, you will come to yourself. Mm. Like the prodigal son. Yeah. <laughs> you will come to yourself. And you will see, if you will have committed yourself to, to such shenanigans, how you have sold short. Mm -hmm. So I want to give you the tricks they use. These girls who, there's another group I'll tell you about one of these days. There are women who grow up without growing up. Yeah. Hmm. They are grown, but they're not mature. Why? The biggest reason is very hidden, but it's very it's hidden in plain sight. Mm -hmm. 
if you hear somebody tell you they, they've been in a relationship for eight years, the relationship stopped them from being exposed to the world, from growing. So she might have started dating at 20, 22, now she's 30, and she's reasoning in such immature way, you are shocked. You're wondering, you're a graduate, you're 30 years old. How would you say, Kikoyos are like this, Luas are like this? Why are you putting people in groups? I'm not like all the lawyers myself. Yeah. I'm not like Masais. You can't say Masais are fools. You're 30 years. She was dating a man, and she and her used to reason that way. When you date a person for long, you are shaped into that person's how they think. Yeah. When you're in a relationship, that's the person you're talking to constantly. You shape your life according to that relationship. So I'll tell you about that, that group that has very delayed development. Mm -hmm. Delayed. and uh, It used to... Um, I mean, it's very shocking. You see the language they're using, even the kind of typing they're typing. You t you expect this from a 21 year old. I'm 32. You're, wait. <laughs> <laughs> no. Please. Are you sure? Yes, I'm actually. I'm turning at three. <laughs> and what makes. So you. I come to realize she was stuck somewhere. Rel premature relationships retard development yeah. by minimizing your exposure and confining you. There are very insecure people who stop you from interacting with the outside world. They confine you so that you actually, years are going, but you're not learning. Mm -hmm. You're not improving. Even at work, they isolate you from colleagues, from people who would have given you knowledge. Even online, they track who you're interacting with. Actually, relationships can be a prison in open air. You look free physically, but mentally and socially you are confined. You can't interact with new people, can't interact with new material. There's always tension, there's always firefighting. I have, it, it used to, I, I said, oh God, she does not appear to have mental retardation. You know, you would want mental challenge, challenge. No, no challenge. And what is it? Where did your 10 years go? Mm -hmm. Because you're talking like you're 22 and you're 32. D no, different. Mm -mm -mm. what happened? I was in a relationship for nine years. Ah, thank you. <laughs> I got it. <laughs> <laughs> when you date an insecure, Brahman, if you stay with a girl who is insecure, she will confine your life to one place. Mm -hmm. you, actually, she can, I've met men who are midlife and they have done nothing with their lives. Nothing. He's 48, 45, man, nothing, no property. No, in fact, he is in debt. Just by having one chaotic, insecure, possessive girl for 20 years, it has held him back for 20 years. And even now, he's on the receiving end. Brahman avoid relationships that are always keeping you on the receiving end. Mm -hmm. Avoid. So that you're the one defending, defending, defending. Hey. So what we're what we are saying is married men have a way of, they know they, they know they are a bad deal. Married man is already married, he's not available, he has no future for this girl. So he is a very bad deal. Mm -hmm. He has nothing to present to this girl. So the first trick they use is they start comparing you unfavorably with the wife. They say, comparing the wife unfavorably, unfavorably with you, saying you are better than the wife. Yeah. Tell our sisters and our daughters never to allow any man to compare you, even to discuss the wife with you. Mm. Even if you're trying to defend the wife, the stupid 23 year olds usually enter the conversation, but they're defending the wife. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're offering a shoulder to lean on to mm. the man, listening as a friend. <laughs> <laughs> sickening, man. <laughs> Just sickening. <laughs> Don't enter any conversation with a man about his wife. Would you want you to be discussed with another woman one day by your husband? Would you want that done to you? Never. Why are you doing it on that woman? The seed you are sowing, you will reap them. Yeah. Always reverse. Whatever the, the woman on the other end. Tell him, no, excuse me. I, uh, I would rather not uh, talk in that direction. Just say, I would rather not. You don't always need to explain. Mm. I don't think it's good. Cha -cha. Don't, don't. I would rather not. If somebody chats you, at the time you know they're supposed to be their family, ignore. They use this entering, ignore. In fact, resist it. Practically, there's a girl who has asked me a question that she's in the IT world, mechanical engineering world, which is male dominated. Mm -hmm. And she's young, she's only 24. She told me I'm surrounded by men. 95% of my colleagues are men, and all of them are after me. When you're th that young and beautiful and youthful and, you know, energetic, men will run after you. As I told you, hunters always aim at the young. <laughs> okay? <laughs> Lions usually cannot hunt a mature elephant. elephant. They need to be very many. 
clothes and it is needs to be very thick or very hungry yes. for them to hunt it. A healthy elephant, it will simply cut a tree and whip the lion. <laughs> They can kill a lion without a lot of struggle. Yeah. Just uh, <laughs> you. <laughs> so normally they go for the young elephants. Mm -hmm. Why? They are naive. One way they usually do is the, 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 the lion will pee on its tail and splash it <laughs> on the young elephant. Mm -hmm. So the young elephant runs among the herd to hide. But it is smelling bad. So the big elephants are king. Ah, you smelling bad. So to be kicked, kicked, kicked because it's smelling bad. Because of what? The lion did to it to get discouraged, lag behind, and the lion now eats. <laughs> Tell a lion girls, somebody will urinate on them, <laughs> pee on them. They smell bad. You got a kid with a married man. I hear you used to be housed by a married man. They can gratify your reputation in your youth. Avoid lagging behind and interacting with the lions, coming too close to discuss their internal life. <laughs> They will pee on you, spoil your name, your reputation, so that people start avoiding you. You get discouraged and you fall into his hands. That's how many young girls ended up being second wife. A very bad deal. You ask her, you have your job, your career, you're this energetic. Why would you take a second position in anybody's life? That's what happened. She was not careful. Yeah. They started discussing the man's private life. <laughs> and uh, it's like he looks stressed. <laughs> you are not give a listening ear <laughs> as a friend. <laughs> As a friend, <laughs> mostly the working colleagues yes. in the work environment, they spend a lot of time. Yeah. Did I warn you about that? Your waking hours are spent with the wrong. The, these people you spend with working hours is very risky. The longest time when you are awake, you are spending it with the people. Who are, if you are not consciously having emotional boundaries, you can get emotionally attached to your colleague very easily. Mm -hmm. Because you are spending more waking time with them, even than with your spouse. Yeah. Be, care, be careful with regular jobs. Yeah. Regular jobs remove you from your people and take you to where you need to earn money mm -hmm. among people who you have no future with. Among whom you are here for selfish money interest. You are not here for each other. Did you come here because of her? Did she come here because of you? No. You happen to be because you are because you're looking for the same thing in the same place. <laughs> the people you have a future with at home. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the people who, can, who swore to be with you in life and in death. <laughs> back at home. But if you are not aware, you can get cloud and you forget. When you come to workplace, because you are interacting a lot, uh, giving each other a cup of coffee, uh, assisting with projects, covering each other over issues, da, 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 da. you can forget that if this person got a promotion, they will leave tomorrow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you are nobody in their life. <laughs> if they are not paid, they will leave tomorrow. They get greener pastures, will leave tomorrow. They are not here for you. Work colleagues is very tricky. They are not here for you. They don't care about you. If you follow sick, it's the people at home whom you are despising who will be there for you. They are not here for you. They are here for themselves. Mm -hmm. Of course, hey, we respect them, have cordial relationships, but maintain professional. Maintain professionalism at your workplace. Keep the higher goal in view. In fact, one thing I encourage men to keep calling their wives is to keep her in your mind. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> don't let too many hours go. Okay? Yes. <laughs> Learn your emotions. Your emotions are like fire. Yeah. Keep. <laughs> revive the. How is it? Keep. Th make that your tradition. And avoid this. This. I don't know where the people got this. And they're normalizing it. Going quiet on each other for days. Mm -hmm. But I'm well. Never allow that with a woman. Days are too many. That our, our life moves so fast. Yeah. You can get trapped by a Delilah within two days. The days you are not talking. <laughs> when you're not talking, you don't feel home. Home is not welcome. Yeah. Because you go and the environment is tense. Mm -hmm. Avoid periods of silence that are uncalled for. Okay? Yeah. Generally, avoid periods of silence where you feel like you have to, you know, uh, push. When an issue comes, solve it and solve it with permanence. Mm -hmm. Discuss how we shall handle this in future. So you felt like I came home late, all right? I had not told you, okay. I kept you hanging for an hour, okay. I had called. I did not get you on phone. And then I started. I got into Matatu. I could not pick. When you called, I could not. And now I came here. You are upset. Now you kept quiet for three days. Was that warranted? We could have discussed it there and then. Mm -hmm. In future, when this happens, how shall we handle it? Because days of silence are too many. The Bible tells us not to give the devil any loophole. The enemy is hanging around. He's looking. The God told you from Genesis all the way to Revelation. Sin stands at the door. The desire has to have you, but you must learn to master it. Mm. You master where you usually go wrong. 
Avoid emotional loopholes. As a woman, don't discuss his struggles, marriage with him. Even if it's a happy story, don't listen to it. Tell these girls also to stop being silly and complimenting the woman to the man. Don't bring the woman in the topic. You see him on the screen saver. <laughs> I like your girl. Oh my way. God greet her. Your child is so one day I'll come to see your child. Stop getting to married people's children, kids, family life. Avoid. All oh, marriages have their own dynamics. They flow like a river. They have ups and downs. Mm -hmm. Stay, keep away from that story. That's one way they welcome the The second way is financial assistance. These girls tell them to get financial assistance from their relatives and their single friends and most all girlfriends. <laughs> most women were trapped when the man rescued her financially. Yeah. And she lost all moral authority mm -hmm. to refuse anything. Don't tell him you're being locked out. Brahma, if it comes, I want you to rule out, to rule out some things and say, because I'm a child of God, I'll never be brought under power by Pharaoh. Yeah. If I ever run out of rent, I'll pack and go home. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll negotiate with the landlord. I'll do this, cut down my budget, anticipate crisis and agree with God. God, I'll never sell my body, my integrity, or compromise, or enter kind of engagement that would, would make me ashamed you, or disturb my life, or take away my peace. Mm -hmm. Provide for me. What did David pray? Let me not go so hungry that I steal. Yeah. And don't let me have so much wealth that I forget you. That should be your prayer. Mm -hmm. God, don't give me pray, the amount of wealth that overwhelms me with the pride and arrogance. At the same time, don't let me lack until I shame you by begging or stealing. That was the prayer of David, and it's always my prayer. I want enough wealth to give me security so that I can perform my work without having to bootleg anyone. But at the same time, at the same time on the other, God, don't let me lack to a level that. There's a time I used to borrow Tala, and I got so angry because I keep sending you reminders and messages, and I felt insulted. <laughs> Every time. You have five days to go, four days to go, <laughs> three days to go. Great, man! <laughs> I swore. You know, you can live in debt if you have never determined. Your God is able to help you, but you, you have never determined. Mm -hmm. Don't assume that God will give you good things. He, has, he says you have not because you ask not. Exactly. Ask, you shall be given. Set your mind. Why, why would Jesus keep telling people according to your faith be done to you? Set a faith. Faith has levels. So I believe that on God I will never borrow again. I will just newly marry. Oh my God. This is the last time you are borrowing. And I'm believing my God. And the fulfillment came true. I changed from borrowing outside to borrowing internally. I save up my own resources equal to the amount of money I frequently need to borrow. <laughs> So I borrow from myself. It's, it just takes discipline. Yeah. When my own resources are depleted, I soon it, and now I borrow my wife. I will always do internal borrowing, never external. And I decided. The second I was trying to buy a car, and the circle asked for so much paperwork and harassment because I have no pay slip. I felt like they are undressing me. <laughs> I quit in the middle. <laughs> Told them to refund my money. And I was just asking for half. I had already saved a half with them. I wanted the other half. We refund the half in 60 days. Before the 60 days, I had already raised enough money to get the car. God confirmed. You can set a standard. And I'm not saying loans are bad because of my lifestyle. I don't mm -hmm. have a pay <laughs> I work like this. Many institutions are not used. <laughs> they want bank statement for the last six months. <laughs> Too much paperwork. At that time, I, did not, I was not even using bank. I was using m on the phone. And they don't recognize this. Don't recognize that. Don't recognize the other. So... I want, to, I, want, I want you to tell those girls, when you're in a financial situation, don't let a married man who, you, who has a crush on you. They always know who has a crush on them mm -hmm. to rescue you. If he rescues you, you'll have got a moral authority yeah. over you. You may not be able to repay, and he can continue sending you the money, and now he's getting a food hold in your mm -hmm. life. One day he just shows up at your house, and you have his money. You have no moral authority. Avoid being put under obligation to reciprocate. There are no free things in this world. There are no free things in this world. In fact, Charles Bukowski said, I've learned that there's no free things in this world. More so those that are advertised as being free. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> He's, he noted specifically the ones that are advertised Advertise. as being free. <laughs> free eye checkup. But they're trying to sell you glasses. Yes. Right? <laughs> <laughs> you see it everywhere. <laughs> you know, and, and one, have you noticed when you go to chemists and pharmacies with a problem, they try to structure your problem in terms of what they're selling. Mm -hmm. It's a free diagnosis, but <laughs> aimed at selling you what they have. <laughs> okay? <laughs> it's good to consult people who have no ulterior motives. So tell these girls to learn to depend on their, their themselves, their God, their mm -hmm. friends, their family. 
Don't tell that person that you are stuck mm -hmm. because they'll have gotten a foothold. You can get actually. Do you know self reliance is a mindset? Are you aware of that? Yeah. I, it's not money, it's not situation, it's mindset. Brahmal self respect and self reliance are decisions you make. Mm -hmm. I will never bootleg or beg. No. I have a God. I'm not, I'm not orphan. He said, I will ne you never leave me like, a, like an orphan and I will never be alone. Will, no. But I'm like that sometimes when, I remember a time we needed to go to a certain school and our car had no fuel and we had no money. That's when my mentor that time showed me the level of faith. Mm -hmm. He believes he's supposed to go and help those kids, but we don't have money yet. So he, he, we just left. And the car is <laughs> almost zero. We need to, a lot of fuel. 5,000 or so. But we don't have any. Ah, we just left. Let's, let's, let's go. <laughs> Along the way, before this ran out, somebody paid, sent him money, bank, a lot of money, 200,000, and we just needed 5,000. Look at that. What if we decide, let us go and borrow and beg, so and so? What if? Do you get it? Yeah. You can choose that God will be your friend, and what God has not provided, I don't need it. I will ask God what I need, and if he does not send it, I know, maybe it's a way to tell me not to go that direction. Yeah. Are we together? Yeah. The third way they use is to give you <laughs> luxurious life. Good life. Mm -hmm. The life. Good shoes, good this. <laughs> this should be clear, but it's not. There are people who are so impatient for the good life. Yeah. They want to show off the shoes, the clothes. You will be given it to you by a married man who is wealthy, but now the way, and remember what he said the slogan, if he pays your rent, he's also renting your body. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Yes. He's renting both the house and the occupant. <laughs> it. Ha. Don't let a person to, and many of them are usually also your bosses. Mm -hmm. Can you demarcate the relationship? Even if he has employed you, even if he has educated you, he's or coaching or mentored you, make sure there are clear boundaries and what are the rewards. I told you to be very careful with this mentorship. I never use that name in my job mm -hmm. because people don't expect to pay mentors. I use coaches because now you must pay a coach. Yes. Fitness coach will be paid. But fitness mentor, you know, he's my mentor. <laughs> <laughs> Define rewards every time. Use language that allows you to understand what are the expectations of both ends. The person wants your personal work, t tell them the fee. Brahma, be careful. You'll get these girls who come calling you dad. Do you have a grown daughter so far? No. <laughs> <laughs> Why do they call everybody dad? It's a very big word. Why are they careless with that language, man? No, no, no. Others come call him. Oh, you know, you're my mentor. Mm. Oh, my dad. Oh, pastor. They even call you pastor. What? <laughs> no. I always remind them I'm a life coach. Yeah. Use that language, I'll be okay. Well, just call me Benjamin. Mm. That's enough. <laughs> now, let's go to the issue. They use that language to box you to a place where you don't ask them to pay. <laughs> it's manipulation. You thought it's respect. <laughs> brother, people are very selfish and they cl they always cover it in a way. Yeah. So explain your issue. If I can answer directly, I answer you. If you need to book a session, I tell you, this is how you book a session. Otherwise, use the free content we have put up there. You can educate yourself. My brother, let me tell you, the, the, this sec this th that tr trick of giving your status. Why would somebody buy you a car? Can't you tell this girl, <laughs> take all the years you need to buy yourself a car. Don't let a person buy you a car for birthday. How weird is this? Don't let a person put you in a house you can't sustain yourself. Don't allow anybody to feed you because if they feed you, they can also starve you. Yes. Don't let anybody lift you somewhere so that you need them to remain there. That's how you get trapped. <laughs> this should be obvious and it's not. <laughs> <laughs> These girls who dress well in campus and they come, uh, you know, showing the kind of flowers they have. Valentine, what are flowers doing in the university on Valentine's? I think I would, uh, I'll walk around on Valentine's. Remind me you got one of these. Yeah. And we ask them, what, what are they doing with the love flowers? <laughs> what is a student doing with love flowers? Mm -hmm. You are awakening love before, before it's time. The Song of Solomon. And it will consume you. It says in the same Song of Solomon, love is as strong as death. Mm -hmm. It can kill you. Yeah. It can kill you. <laughs> Catch for us the small foxes. <laughs> the small foxes are the ones destroying. Small mistakes are uh, ill-timed. <laughs> and I told you, <laughs> anyway, let me go to the lab. <laughs> but mm. one of the, the Valentines, remind me, yes. we should do it in the, in the university. Yes. We should appear there and walk around, checking. I see a girl carrying a flower. <laughs> <laughs> My friend, you should be carrying books. You <laughs> should be carrying geometrical set. You <laughs> should be carrying instruments. should have a stethoscope. You <laughs> should have instruments for your future. 
You are being bought. Somebody will not bring you uh, flowers for nothing. There's no free. Mm -hmm. There's no free things in this yeah. world. Mm -hmm. No free things. The, there's a time and a season for every matter under the sun. The fourth, the, the last trick they use is to play father and fill the emotional gaps in your life. Mm -hmm. The comforter. If you come from a very strict home where you have never been validated, they start praising you, yeah. validating you, lifting your self-esteem, building you. That's why you hear this girl say, he has helped me so much. Practically he has helped you, but at what cost? Mm -hmm. What is the reward for him? I'm not saying people can't help for free, but girls can always tell when a person has an interest. And because you come crying, the way you have quarreled with your father, the way you are being demanded money at home, the way you are not being... And then he listens to you, comforts you, encourages you. Do, do, do. Every time you have an issue, what is happening? Tell girls, wherever you go for comfort, wherever you go tell your secrets, wherever you go for validation, whoever is lifting you up, affirming you, if you make it one consistent person, you will not know when you cross boundaries and you fell in love. Mm -hmm. The fourth trick is they make the girl fall in love. He does not appear to be pursuing himself. He just tends to notice that you're not okay. Today, are you, is, is everything okay? Oh, this happened. Oh, I'm so sorry. And don't worry. In fact, I will, I will feel in for you. Just go and rest. That's good help as a friend. But if it is frequent from the same person, regular from the same person, and what is happening? You begin to see them very understanding, yeah. very supportive, very helpful, very this. They even help you get jobs, help you get promotions, help you get your project finished. Same person. <laughs> And you can sense boundaries getting blurry, mm. blurry, and you crossing boundaries. Think twice. So the point here is to say, the fourth trick is to make you fall in love by feeling you are unconscious emotional gaps. Mm -hmm. Unconscious emotional gaps. You need to go for therapy. Uh, let's, remind, remind, uh, uh, let's remind graduates and th those who start working. Your first salary, your first money, supposed to use it to fill up, to correct all the things you suffered as a child. Yeah. You may not suspect sometimes, but you know you have difficulty trusting or you fall in love too quickly or you admire this, you long to be validated. Go for therapy, go for life coaching. Mm -hmm. Your first money should be used to work on everything that is wrong in your life because the next season will be for dating, for establishing marriage. And if you carry these deficits, they will interfere with your life and you may never get a good family. Mm -hmm. may never date right because you grew up with a very stern mom, stern dad, yeah. very subdued father. The mother was the queen was the one ruling the, the emperor here. Dad was cowed. You have never seen a man, seen a man who has a voice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a man who's confident. And you, because of the contrast with your father, you admire so much. Or you agree that very a father was very strict and distant. Mm -hmm. But here's a man who's kind. You can fall in love quickly because of the problems you grew up with. Mm -hmm. Your first year, first two years, when you start earning any money, any money, even if you're not sure that you're okay, Attend therapy. Start learning with sessions like this to help you get, get a, draw your attention to what could be wrong with you. I walked to a, to a safari com shop mm -hmm. the other day here in TRM. And many of them recognized me. They were telling me, that all the, one of them was telling me how she laughed her way home because I was describing the mistakes they made. And she was telling me, remind this group, we did not have a teacher like them. Mm -hmm. You came so late in our life. Okay, we will try to do what we can, correct where we can. But many of us, we were not bad or defiant. Mm -hmm. We simply didn't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Told, told me nobody was mentioning the right age <laughs> and why <laughs> nobody was mentioning what's wrong with this and that mm -hmm. nobody was telling if you want this we did not have you know even those of us who are eager to be taught we have no teachers remind these girls that what we are telling them others are regretting for not having heard it yeah. and they should do themselves a favor so those are the four tricks we started and so we, we, we started and said you will discuss his family and his struggles for you to become a comforter mm -hmm. you become like you're getting close he's telling you the other thing is he rescues you financially mm -hmm. <laughs> he comes when you're in a very bad situation and he pays off and we said when he rescues you financially now he has a root in your life don't tell your problems to any married friend Tell them to other friends who, who may not take advantage of it. Mm -hmm. The other thing is he gives you a status. When you are greedy and impatient for good life, for cars, for houses, for clothes, for shoes, give you a status and you assume it is for free, you idiot. There are no free things in this world. Yeah. <laughs> what he gives you, you have to pay back. The fourth strategy is he notices you have emotional problems from how you grew up. 
and he capitalizes on them to make you fall in love. Nobody has ever validated you, confirmed you, seen how beautiful you are, uh, paid attention to you, you know, uh, attended to you, listened to you, and showed to you through empathy. And no, 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 no. It's you now falling in love, and you begin to feel so obsessed, 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 obsessed with him, and he takes advantage of mm -hmm. that. Yes. I like that. Now, Benjamin, all this, it begins with one factor, friendship. Now, how can these single girls establish a healthy boundary with this kind of married men? Make it your decision early. Mm -hmm. It begins with, um, even he himself, you can tell him and say, for me as a person, I decided um, I prefer to have healthy boundaries with married people because I respect my sisters on the other end and I respect families and uh, that's okay. Mm -hmm. uh, decide, begin with that decision. Does not happen automatically. Mm -hmm. Does not happen automatically. automatically. Begins that decision. So make up your mind and be alert. When you begin to fantasize a person, when you notice that bringing you gifts or doing things, favors, you can notice them. Girls are perceptive. They can see. They just encourage it because it feels so nice mm -hmm. to, to have a guy thinking about you. No. Control it. Control it. Now, we have this group of men who are married, but they are still single. That is another category that knows how to position themselves to trap these girls. They, they behave like they're single. They hide the marriage. Yeah. But a married person, if you interact with them, you can, s you can, you can learn it. You can see it. Mm -hmm. In fact, most women who are attentive, not the ones who come to with emotions and falling in love, even if he's hiding it how, you can see something that is not adding up. Mm -hmm. You may not know in detail the kind of marriage or oh, wow there, but you can notice patterns. Most ladies who are attentive, they will tell you, it's, it's almost impossible to deceive for long, for months, for two months, for three months, she will know it. She may not have the details, but she knows there's a woman in your life. Mm -hmm. You don't even need to, to be married. As long as there's a woman in your life, me interacting with who is in your life, she will pick it. Women can be observant and patient. Mm -hmm. In your conversations, something will come up. In, your, in the way you talk, something will come up. In the patterns of your life, something will come up. Something will come up. Some, they will see a photo of a child on your... They will see... They will see... <laughs> they will hear a call. They will... You, if, if you are talking with a person, maybe you're working together or they're in a certain place and you're talking frequently, you can't hide perfectly. Tell girls to simply be observant. And another thing, Brahma, trust God. I mm -hmm. told you God is a friend because he's seeing everything. Yeah. If you ask him, God, guide me to know the truth. Don't let me be trapped. He will be happily help you. Mm -hmm. Yes. I like that. Now, Benjamin, you see, life is a product Life, our life is a product of our patterns. Yes. You see? Now, we have girls who have been with a very good relationship with their dads, that they have a lot of influence in them. So this girl sees the dad as the best, and she will always want a guy who is similar to the dad. And they end up projecting the qualities of their father on you, just yes. because you dress like him. Yes. Or you look physically like him. Uh -huh. <laughs> This is a place of therapy, this is a place of life coaching. B don't enter dating before balancing your emotional life. Mm -hmm. Don't. Please, you make deadly blunders. Does not always mean to be a therapist. There are some conversations you have with insightful friends that are as good as therapy. Mm -hmm. They help you self ref reflect, introspect. But you must consciously walk up to. Uh, luckily for me, when I did masters in counseling, they required you to do 25 hours of therapy. And I realized everybody should do 25 hours, 25 hours, or at least five hours of something. Okay. The things I rebalanced in my life because of my career requirement, I felt like I have an advantage of other people, which is unfair. Mm -hmm. I was forced to look at areas of my life that are uncomfortable. Because when you discuss how you grow up, the, the life coach will ask you, so what, what is that likely to do to you? Mm -hmm. We may not be sure that it really wounded you, but a child who grew up with parents who are cold and unaffectionate to each other, who are strict to the children. What is like that likely? I don't know. I think we just made the best of the situation and here we are, we succeeded with God. Okay, with Angel God, no problem. But let's go back there. What is the effect of a cold home <laughs> on a child? Naturally. Before we compensate it, what was it? Yeah. Do you see you are being made to look at something you wanted to gloss over? Ah, we grew up with that's okay. In essence, you did not see love at all and you're not likely to differentiate attention from affection. Yes. You're likely to appreciate any kind of semblance of love. 
you have no standards to measure up with. Mm -hmm. Did I know that? No. You see it? Yeah. Okay, so you grew up with parents who are very loving to each other and they loved you guys. What is that likely to do with your world view today? Mm -hmm. You are likely to assume all oh, people are like that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and you're not likely to differentiate fake love from true love mm -hmm. because you think people are true, like your parents are true. Mm -hmm. So whether you had a happy childhood or unhappy childhood, you need to process it and adjust to the real life. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah. You may go one, two sessions, realize actually you are adjusting well. Now you are sure. The same way you service your car, whether things had gotten finished or not, you check them. Mm -hmm. When the p time for servicing comes, you check them. So don't transfer, don't go to dating before you rebalance to know what transferences, misconceptions, twisted worldviews, biases you acquired from your growing up that are likely to affect how you choose the marital partner. Right, and that is the best place to end this conversation, dear guys. Thank you so much. I hope you'll find time to revisit those unpleasant scars in your life so that you can heal and make better decisions in life. Thank you for watching the Benjamin Zuli Show. Till next time.